Before we can begin forwarding ports, the first thing we need to do is grab the device access code from the rear of the gateway or the bottom of the gateway, as you can see here. Now that you have your device access code, we need to log into the AT&T router. The default IP address to log into the AT&T router is 192.168.1.254. You can simply type this into the URL bar in your favorite browser, and it will take you to the configuration page. Now on my setup, I have changed this default IP address, so it will be different than what you see at home if you are using the default IP address. But nonetheless, the steps are still the same. Once you enter that default IP address, you'll land on a page that looks incredibly similar to this, and then you're gonna want to click on Firewall near the top right. Now click on NAT and Gaming, and enter in that device access code you found earlier on the back of your device or on the bottom of your device. Now there is a drop down menu for a whole list of different games and things that you can pre-port forward if you would like, including host names and other IP addresses in this drop down menu as well. But we're going to ignore this and not actually use this because I prefer to use the latest and greatest information from the internet. So we're going to add some custom services first, and this is how we will do our port forwarding. So if you click on this button here, uh, the first service that we're going to create is for our Minecraft server. The ports for Minecraft, the default ports for Minecraft are 25565, 25565. And we're gonna enter in that again. And we're just gonna set this to be TCP and UDP. And now we'll click add. And then we can see that we've added that server, or the Minecraft server ports uh, to our custom service list. Now, while we're here, we may as well go ahead and add another one. In this case, it will be for our Valheim server. And the default ports for Valheim are 256 through 2458. And the base port is just gonna be 2456. And these are gonna be TCP and UDP. We'll click add, and they'll be good to go. Now that we've added those two, let's return to Nat and Gaming. And you can see that our Minecraft server is already available here to us because this was recently added. And my computer is named UK, UCKP. So we'll click add. And now the Minecraft server ports are forwarded to my computer. Now we're gonna wanna do the same thing again, except for a Valheim server. So I'm gonna select my PC, which is the UCKP. That is the name of the computer. I'm gonna click add, and now it is there. Now for fun, we'll just go ahead and add a couple other services. So we'll add one for Arc Survival. Uh, this one has many, many, many ports. Uh, so I will just add a few of them as an example. So that port is 27015, 27015. This is UDP. We'll click Add. Uh, we will add the Game Client port. So this is Arc survival game client port and that port is 777 777 777 UDP and now we need a socket port arc survival socket port and you can name these whatever you'd like uh, I would just suggest naming them something that is very memorable and easy to figure out in the future should they change or since you need to modify them in any way and this port is also a UDP port cool now we've added those and we're good to go now what happens if you don't actually see a host name or IP address of a computer that you want to pass the port forward to all you see is something unknown like these numbers here that don't really make a lot of sense. Well, these are actually called Mac addresses. So what you'll need to do to find this is, at least on Mac OS, is bring up the system preferences, click on network, go to advanced, click on hardware, and then you'll see your device's Mac address. And then you'll basically want to look for that in the drop down menu that we were just looking at here. And when you find that device MAC address, you can simply click on it, click add, and it will effectively have passed the port through there. 
Now on Windows, it is very similar process, but unfortunately you'll have to Google search that in order to figure it out on your own. I'm very sorry about that. Unfortunately, there's really no way at this time to enter manually enter in an IP address, which is very unfortunate because that would make it very simple. Uh, and these are what we're being forced to use when using AT&T software. So uh, definitely learn how to get your MAC address if you intend to add ports or figure out how to give your computer a custom name so it's more easily identifiable on this list here. And that is how you port forward on the AT&T BGW320 505 or 500. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Today's video is going to be a bit of a talking head video because we're talking about AT&T's newish gateway. This is the BGW320-500 and you guys might be interested, especially if you have AT&T Fiber at home or if you're thinking about getting AT&T Fiber because it has a couple of unique features that you'll probably be interested in. And one of those first features is Wi-Fi 6. And Wi-Fi 6 on this is actually pretty nice. It has much better range than the previous gateways. The previous gateway I'm coming from is a BGW210-700, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And that Wi-Fi absolutely sucks bad. Like getting reception beyond a couple of walls is basically impossible and pointless. But this one seems to be a lot better and it was able to reach across the house, which was really nice to see. But you should know that I'm not using Wi-Fi 6 and I've disabled the Wi-Fi on this anyway, so I'm not even using it because I have ubiquity access points around the house. Now, another cool thing about this is this unit actually doesn't require having the ONT uh, in your home. So typically, or maybe not typically, but in my previous experience, at t actually had to install a fiber jack in the house. So basically the fiber line comes from the street, goes into the ONT, and then gets converted over to copper and then gets sent to the gateway. Well, now that has been totally eliminated. So it's freed up one port on my UPS, thank God, and there's no more conversions necessary. It all happens here. So now it goes from the street fiber straight to this F SFP port here on bottom, which is really cool to see. And then, you know, gets converted internally to copper or whatever uh, to go to your router, access point, gateway, whatever it may be on the other end. And on that subject, we'll go ahead and talk about the ports here on the rear. So what's really odd with...